It is pointless to resist. Hiya. <laughs> you alright? Yeah, welcome to another video, yeah. It's not a training video, unfortunately. Anybody that knows me knows I'm out of action, yeah. For a month, at least two months. But I've been buying, yeah. And I've bought a Terry Steel Strand, another one. But what's so good about this is I've been after it for ages. It's got this in it. The Terry's... Steel Strand Chest Expander Exercise Routine. Yeah, it's got all these exercises in and they're all pretty fantastic. In total, it's got 46 exercises in it to which I'm going to have a really good go. I mean, some of them are just like turning your knuckles round. So I'm going to get this beast out actually. Yeah, look at this. 30 pound springs, yeah. It says it on here. I should put my glasses on before I do these videos. Can't see. £30 spring. Yep. They do a 50, right? And I'm going to get a 50. But yeah, so two springs on there, £60. I'm not going to pull it because I'm not going to force my injury. I'll pull it so far. Yep. To about there. But I'm not going to... I'm not going to... Uh, hurt myself. Right, quick thing on my exercises that I've been told to do. They're so bizarre, it's unbelievable, right? So, apparently, my back and my shoulders are too far back. Yeah, which I didn't know could be a problem because I was always told to stand to attention as a kid. So basically what I've got to do is, and this one is too far up and this one's too far down. So, what I've got to do is put this hand in the pocket and reach in. Yep, and uh, then align that. So I put them both in the pocket, yeah, and they align my shoulders. And what it does, it stretches that trap out, yeah, because this one would always like a bit of a knot. That's exercise number one, I've got to do it regularly, yeah. When I'm stood talking, I've got to hold this arm like that and pull it down. Not make it obvious, just stand like that, yeah, whenever I remember, not all the time. I've also got to hug cushions so when i'm sat watching telly i have to hug these cushions like this yeah and stretch over and stretch all the back out yeah like that and then sometimes when i'm walking about i've got to put that arm like that and just walk about house like this yeah and i've been doing it now for a week and uh, I have to say, I can't believe the results. So I've been training. I've been doing all these, all these. Yeah, I've been doing everything. Yeah, and some as simple as stretching, messing about the cushions, realigning this. Yeah, has made a lot of difference. Um, the arm, even though it still hurts there, across there, it ain't locking. It's not locking, but it, it's got potential to... I've got to release all that mashed up stuff in there. He basically said it's all uh, inflammation that's built up over years that I have to release over time. Now, another thing he told me, and when I say he, I'm referring to my osteopath, who is very, very knowledgeable. Another thing he told me when he found out what my job was, I shouldn't be training at all. But <laughs> that ain't going to happen. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about what he said about training as well. And it really hits home. When I first started training, when I was a nipper, I know I was lifted too much and I know I made a lot of mistakes in book. Um, and I know I hurt myself. But one thing I've realised after speaking to an osteopath is all this trying to get in the right, what everybody calls the right position when you're chest pressing or the right position when you're doing, uh, you know, sit-ups and stuff like that. Or when you're doing rows and you're pulling your shoulders back and all that yeah this osteopath said it's all pretty much nonsense and it leads to injury and the cogs have been ticking in my mind and I'm thinking he might have a point because when I do press ups now as far as being injured and I try and rotate the elbows yeah and uh, set the shoulders and come down like that it kills it kills like it don't belong to me yeah whereas when I used to do press-ups when I was a nipper and I could do loads 
Same with pull-ups, they usually just pull, could do loads, never got injured, never uh, weird. So there might be something in it. But yeah, back to this. Back to this. This is the Tilly's 30 pound chest expander and we've got five strings. Look at them whoppers of strings. They're belters out there. And it even goes up to 50 pounds. Eventually I'll get all the kit because I want it all. Because in my opinion, these Tilly's chest expanders are the best chest expanders ever produced. Right? Now I can't vouch for the Robert Barabin that everybody talks about. But I've looked at weights, what that can get to, and these can as well, when you get the £50 strings. These can achieve those goals. They're really, really good. And what I like about these, I've used a few. I've used the cheap chest expander, which is rubbish. I've used the spend bins, which is decent. But it's what it is about these, it's the pull. It's just got such a sweet pull. Yeah, and it's always pulling you back. But it's so sweet. I mean, basically from there, it's fighting you literally from there whereas some chest expanders you're nearly all the way over here before they're fighting you now one thing about what the uh, osteopath told me about training he said because i mentioned chest expander and he says right when you're using chest expander but you're one of these that pulls all the back ah, i really go for it i said yeah he said no basically you should be in a neutral position right and you should be pulling that until you can't see the hand in the eye. If you go further back, where you can't see the hand, you've gone too far back. Yeah, everything should be in your peripheral vision because in nature, he says, that everything in your peripheral vision is where your joints should move, um, especially under stress. Anywhere else, any further back, which is what we all do when we're training, yeah, we set the shoulders back, we do rows and set everything right back here. He said anything back like that, so natural and under weights or tension, you get injured. It really, really has sent me thinking, is all this stuff necessary? And I'm going to, you know, when I get back training, I'm actually going to look into this. I'm going to start training how the body intended. Yeah, so I can't wait. So I'll start on chest, but I'll just give an example. I'll start on chest expander when I get back, but there won't be any of this, like pulling back with shoulders or all like that. I'll just pull. Yeah, I'll just pull until it feels unnatural and then I'll let go and see what that feels like. Anyway, I've waffled. I'm just really glad that I've got this and I'm just really glad that I've got this because I've been after it for ages. But look what's on back of this. That's my rowing machine. Yeah, a sculler to be precise. That's like a little advertisement for the rowing machine I've got. Anyway, I've got some good news as well. I'm going to do a talk, a proper talk on Terry's, right, because I've ordered a chest expander that's the wall exerciser as well. So it's got like two springs on it and then it's got two tiny springs that you can take off and you can use. I don't know how to do it yet because I haven't bought it, but you can use the contraption and make it a wall exerciser. So I really can't wait to get that. And actually I can't wait to set it up because I've got so many of these Terry springs now that I could, I could ditch the bands and I could train with these. And I think I could get some decent workouts with these. Especially if I find a way to put them to me, my bar, yeah. So I can't wait to get the wall exerciser. But when I get it, I am going to do a bit of a talk on it, yeah. And, and I'm going to try and find out as much of the history of Terry's as I can and do a bit of talk on that. Because these, only in my opinion, have to be the best chest expander springs ever made. Look at that, 1960s, 1950s, and it still looks brand new. Yep, and it's still the same as date were made. You can't beat English quality. Over and out.